Hello, welcome to this week's CMC Markets Currency Snapshot with myself, Jasper Lawler. This week we're going to be looking at how to manage a successful breakout trade. Uh, this is a follow through on last week where we were looking at the management of a failed breakout trade. So being a bit more positive this time, both are very important to your long term trading success, but this is almost the other end, uh, the other end of the scale. So what we're going to do here is we're going to look at the dollar Canadian currency pair. This is tracking back to March 26th when we did a, a snapshot on the dollar CAD, potentially breaking down below 124. Now, as it happens, that breakout did follow through and reach a pattern objective, but we just want to follow through how you could have managed the trade both on an entry and an exit and throughout and how those different, effect, uh, those different factors could have affected how the result turned out. So this is the dollar CAD currency pair. It's the daily candlestick chart. Now, the, the down, down pointing arrow that you can see around the middle of the chart around that March 26th date is when we had that last snapshot video. So just highlighting the, the possibility that prices may break down. So what happened was that price held the 124 support and uh, bounced up almost as high as 128 in the top of the range. Now you can see, I've highlighted here, it says support holds, that's, that's the 124 bounce. And then at the top here, we've got a, a lower peak with a bearish candle. So that's one of the sort of first indications, if you like, that maybe prices is, is, is looking like a, a bit weaker than it has been. Still within the trading range, but it's, it's one piece of information. So price does subsequently drop down again now what we get here is a false break of 124. So anyone who was, had perhaps a, a, um, a short order beneath 124 potentially could have been caught out there depending on where the, the stop loss has been placed because it dropped below 124 but subsequently bounced right back up again. And then you can see I've labeled here it said uh, another peak with a bearish candle another lower peak with a bearish candle. So here we've seen uh, two successive lower peaks indicating that price is not able to make new highs, it's not uptrending, it's still within the downward channel but it's starting to slope downwards. So then the next piece of information here is that we've got a down day, it's a follow through on that other weak candle, we're still within the range but it's a bit of extra information. Then the real key here is when we actually do break that key support which is around 123.60 which is where these lows were earlier in the chart, and you can see the bottom of the channel here. Now that was the big move. So you could have had a, a short entry order beneath those lows. You'd have caught it higher up. You potentially could have had an order to sell on a retracement back to 123.60. Unfortunately, on this occasion, that probably wouldn't have worked. We never quite got back there. Um, or you could have had an entry on the, on the close of that breakout candle. You would, have, you would have been in the trade, but you would have just been a bit lower on it. So all of these little factors can affect even whether you get in the trade or in fact how, you know, how good of a price level you get. Um, the price does track down. It almost hits the objective. This would have been pretty frustrating for anyone perfectly targeting this 119.20 level, which is 100% of the length of the pattern on those two lines just projected beneath the breakout area. Now, with the benefit of hindsight, I would say that actually you probably want a, a profit objective a bit above the 100% just to allow for a margin of error. And you could have saved yourself a bit of sideways movement until the objective was pretty much hit bang on um, a few days later. Um, so there, the objective's been hit, but as I sort of mentioned, um, and I've uh, written in the chart here, we do have the, a few nerve wracking bounces here. And then this could have been, a, this was quite a rocky ride down to the objective but nonetheless it got there. So it just shows that it's key not to get shaken out of the trade a bit too early, but once you do get a point where there's a price down trend line break, as I've labeled here, corresponding to an RSI trend line break, if you use RSI, you know, that's a sign that uh, actually price is starting to move in the other direction now. And so there's potentially a trade going the other way. So that's, that's the end of the sort of short story here. So that's the end of our currency snapshot. We were looking at dollar CAD. And just an example of, even though this was a successful trade according to the, the chart pattern, definitely a few variables along the way that can affect the overall profitability. And if indeed you do come away with a profit, even on a, a successful chart pattern. So it's not just the pattern that counts. Again, it's, it's how you manage the trade.